Unit 6, FRQ1, these are the progress checks from AP Classroom, and I'm Mr. Heinrich. Great to see you guys. Let's get into this one. We've got a uniform bar of length L, and it can rotate with negligible friction about a vertical axis at the bar center, as shown in the top view of Figure 1. A dart of mass MD is traveling horizontally and perpendicular to the bar with speed VI, as indicated. The bar is initially at rest and then rotates after the dart hits and sticks into the bar at a distance R from the axle. The bar has a mass MB and a rotational inertia IB about its center. So in part A, figure two is a top view of the bar during the brief time interval that the dart is colliding with the bar. The two dots in the figure represent the location where the dart hits the bar and the bar's center. Part I of A, in figure two, draw and label the horizontal forces or force components that act on the bar while the dart is colliding with it. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting at and pointing away from the point at which the force is exerted on the bar. So we're only looking for forces that are being exerted on the bar. Okay, here's our bar with our two locations that we care about. The dart is coming in, it's gonna hit this location. We will call that force of the dart. Also, since the bar is gonna rotate, it is being supported by this axle, otherwise it wouldn't rotate. So the axle actually provides a support force that you could call normal force if you wanted to, or the force of the axle, either one is fine. A1 is done, let's move on to A2. All right, in preparation for A2, we're gonna read this. After the dart collides and sticks to the bar, the bar dart system rotates, and the dart moves in a circle with the speed VF. A2, starting with the conservation of angular momentum, derive an expression for VF in terms of IB, L, MB, MD, R, VI, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing either a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. All right, let's head over to the paper. All right, let's get cracking on this. A2, we've got to find VF. We're given a bunch of stuff that we can express our answer in. And we have the conservation of angular momentum. Now I need to get this statement out of the way. When you have something like a dart or a ball or anything that's moving in a linear path and it hits something that's about to rotate, people have a hard time realizing that this object itself that was moving in a linear fashion actually has a rotational momentum relative to that axis. So the moment this makes contact, that split second when it makes contact with the bar, that dart now has a rotational momentum relative to that axis. And in that split second, the bar is not even rotating yet. That bar is still stationary. Therefore, my initial angular momentum is completely because of the dart, and that's it. All right? I hope that made sense. So what I'm going to write here is I have the dart, times the initial angular velocity of the dart. And we will expand this idea in a moment. Equals. Now what's going on after this collision takes place? The dart hits and this whole bar wants to now spin. So there's two rotational inertias. We have both the eye of the dart plus the eye of the bar together. And those two added together are the total rotational inertia of the system times the final angular velocity. Remember, I times omega is angular momentum. And there's a great place to start for the rest of our derivation. I'm gonna solve for omega f because I know it's directly related to vf. So I'm gonna write omega f equals id omega i divided by id plus ib. And at this point, I think it's a good idea to start putting in specific information for omega f, omega i, and id. Notice we can leave ib in our answer. So off to the side, I'm going to say, oh yeah, that's right. Linear velocity is related to angular velocity through this equation. V equals r omega. And it's important to realize that id is the rotational inertia of a point mass, in this case the dart. So ID would be mass of the dart times R squared. Remember this distance here is distance R, and that is the distance the mass is from the axis of rotation. 
So let's do a little bit of substitution here. And for omega, I could put in V over R. If you need to see that real fast, omega would be equal to V over R. And I'm going to plug that in. So I'll have VF over R equals MDR squared times omega I, which would be VI over R, all over MDR squared plus IB. The equation is looking a bit unruly at this point, but we're going to make it look nice, trust me. So this R would cancel out with one of those R's, but then instantly I would multiply this R back over to the other side, and I'd get R squared again. So maybe that was a silly way to do it, but that's what I'm going to do. So I will have VF equals MD R squared times VI over MDR squared plus IB, and that will be my final result. All right, and there's our answer for A2. All done, we're going on to part B, but if you wanna hang out here for a moment, I'm gonna talk a little more about linear velocity versus angular velocity. So if you wanna skip ahead to part B, go ahead and do that, but I'm gonna talk a little more about this. Sometimes I make the assumption that all of you already know this stuff, but maybe you don't remember, you didn't learn it that well the first time, or you just need a refresher. In any case, I want to make sure that you understand that no matter what point I select along this entire rotating system, all of these points will have the same exact angular velocity. That is to say that as this dart hits and it swings the system this direction, like this, all of these points are going to undergo the same exact angle change. It doesn't matter if I go way in or way out, all of these are the same angle theta. And that's what omega is. It's a change in angle or a change in angular displacement, we say, with respect to time. And you can clearly see that all three of those angles or all three of these angles are identical. So that's why I can say every point in the rotating system at an instant has the same angular velocity. However, the linear velocity, which we looked for in this problem, is a lot different. So if I was to look at, say, this point, this point, and this point, when this dart first hits, this point has a big initial linear velocity. But as I go closer to the axis of rotation, my linear velocity is actually less and less. And when you finally get to the middle, there is no linear velocity. And if you're wondering why that is, well, if this system could actually spin all the way around, wouldn't this point not have to travel as far to make a complete circle versus this point, which would have to travel further to make a complete circle? And finally, this point at the outer edge would have to travel the furthest circumference to make a full circle. And since this point has to travel in the biggest circle in the same amount of time that this one has to travel in a medium circle, this one has to travel in a small circle, it must go the fastest. And that's why linear velocity is the biggest as you travel further out from the axis of rotation. Okay, I hope that helped you out for understanding some important concepts for rotational motion. Let's go on to part B. All right, part B. Man, that is a ton of words. I don't want to read it. Pause it. Read it for yourself. But we have the same dart traveling with the same initial velocity coming in at both of these bars. This one clearly has more of its mass concentrated to the center. Bar Y has more of its mass concentrated to the outside. And that's what you can see. But let's read this last line. The darts collide and stick to the bars after which the bar X dart system rotates with an angular speed omega X and the bar Y dart system rotates with an angular speed omega Y. B, indicate which of the two angular speeds, if either, is greater than the other. And the answer is this one. This is definitely a bigger angular velocity than Y's angular velocity. And remember, for this explanation, we can't derive or manipulate equations. So let's check this one and let's talk. Both systems have the same mass dart coming in at the same velocity with the same radius from the axis of rotation, period. This means both systems have the same initial angular momentum, period. Since bar X has more of its mass distributed toward the axis of rotation, it has a smaller rotational inertia, period. And for angular momentum to be conserved with a smaller rotational inertia, comma, bar X must spin with a greater angular velocity, and in parentheses write omega X, period. 
And you could go on to compare bar Y. You could say bar Y has more of its mass to the outside. Therefore, it has a greater rotational inertia. And in order for angular momentum to be conserved, bar Y would have to spin slower. But I don't think you need to say all that Y stuff. You can end your justification at bar X. That should be fine. Well, it's late over here, so I'm signing out. Please like and subscribe. I'll get the next one out to you real soon. Have a great day night whenever you're watching this thing. Talk to you soon.